nobody greater than you. Take your Bible, stand up with me, turn to the book of Proverbs, chapter 29. Just one verse out of Proverbs. If you can find the book of Psalms, it's the book after that. And it's the book of Proverbs, chapter 29. And let's go to the 18th verse. And it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the word you've given me for tonight. I pray the anointing of your spirit. Lord, teach us. May we become everything you've called us to be. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you can see it, you can have it. Oh, look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, if you can see it, you can have it. You may be seated. You may be seated. The Bible tells us that God's people perish because they don't have a vision. Without a vision, people will die on the inside. If you cannot see your dreams coming to pass, you will surely perish at least on the inside. Anytime someone doesn't have a dream, they don't do very well in life. But now that you love the Lord, God made you to dream. Even if your dreams have died, even if your dreams have been shattered, God brought you here so you could begin to dream again. Isaiah was a visionary. He would pray. He would hear from God. He would pray, but he would begin to see things through the eyes of faith. When you get into the Bible and you begin to read the Word, God will put things on the inside of you that no man can can tell you. There are some things that only God can give you. Isaiah would pray. And he would get a vision from God. And that's what you have to do. Your whole life will change when you begin to pray and say, God, use me for your glory. What do you want to do with my life? I always tell people, get involved in your church. Find a place to serve in your church. Because that's how you're going to find the passion that's in your heart. That's how you're going to find a way to to accomplish what God has called you to do. Bible faith. Let me tell you what Bible faith is. It's not a feeling. It's not butterflies in your stomach. Bible faith is nothing more than a determination to read what God says and just be determined to believe what he said. That's all it really is. And so so God wants you to have Bible faith, no matter what your circumstances. True faith is about seeing what God says and not how you feel. I mean, know that your feelings will fool you. Your feelings will take you completely away from the Word of God. God's Word is mighty and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. That's why it's so important that you go to the right kind of church. Uh, You heard it already. I'm loving my heritage. But it's it's important that you go to the right kind of church. You need to hear hear from God. You've got to have the right kind of preacher. Come on, somebody. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word. You've got to continually hear the Word so your faith can grow. But if you're not hearing the word, there is a very good chance that your vision is not growing. God's word will give you vision. The word of God is strong. It's powerful. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. Heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. If somebody has a speech impediment, the first thing the doctors will do is check their ears. They do not check their tongue. They don't check their lips they check their ears. If someone is speaking improperly, it's because they are not hearing properly. It's important that you hear what God is saying so as you hear what God is saying, you can have a vision for your future. The things you hear determine the level of your faith. There is something about praying and putting things in God's hands that allows Him to speak to you. You need to speak to your children about their future. Speak vision into their lives. Talk to them about their goals and dreams. You gotta, they've got to see it before they can have it. You've got to speak vision into their lives. You've got to speak to the mountains that, are, that stand in your way. I declare that 2015 is your year. 2015 is my year. But I want you to say it, and I want you to keep on saying it. Say it and keep on saying it until that faith rises up in your heart. Jesus said that the devil comes to steal and kill and destroy. 
The enemy's got a plan to kill your dreams so he can steal your future. He's got a plan to steal your vision so you never see what God has for you. Some people have just been so beat down in life, they've got no vision for their future. That's why you got to be under the right kind of pastor in the right kind of church because you've got to have vision. If I put these glasses on just as a, as a picture, you got the idea, right? It's about what you see. You have to be able to see it before you can have it. You've got to be able to see what God has for you before you can have it. God wants each of us to get in his word so we have power against our spiritual enemy. The, the word is going to give you vision. God wants us to see the vision that he has for us so we can run the race that is set before us. See, it's not good enough to have a dream. you got to see the dream come to pass. It's not good enough to have a vision. You've got to see the vision come to pass in your life. I had a vision to come back to Denver and to build an all-new Heritage Christian Center. And I, that vision is strong on the inside of me. And even though many things have tried to steal the vision away, the vision is alive and well because God told me if I can see it, I can have it. The enemy's plan is to discourage me and make me think that nothing's ever going to work out. But Jesus, uh, see, Jesus said that the devil is a liar. The word tells me to hold on to my dreams because God will do exceedingly, abundantly, beyond anything I can ask or think. In other words, if you can't see it, come on somebody, if you can't see it, you see the glasses, if you can't see it, you can't have it. Tell somebody that, if you can see it, you can have it. If you're going to dream big dreams, how many people have big dreams? Can I see your hand? If you're going to dream big dreams, you know that the enemy's going to try to stop those dreams from coming to pass. But the enemy wouldn't be fighting you if God didn't have something great for you. The battles that you're going through right now tell you that something good must be happening in your life. No matter what it looks like today, God has an answer for you. There has to be a way out of your trouble. There has to be a way because Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. You've got you to be going somewhere because he is the great way maker. Isaiah had a vision of the Lord being high and lifted up. And may I say, if you're going to dream some big dreams, it's got to start with you seeing the Lord high and lifted up. If you're going to see your dreams come to pass, you've got to see God bigger than your problems. When you see him high and lifted up, it'll change your perspective in life. When you see him large and in charge, you'll believe that nothing is impossible for God. When you see him high and lifted up, I'm telling you, your dreams will get bigger. Your dreams will increase. I'm believing for, for Easter Sunday that every seat is going to be filled for the two services on Sunday morning. Can I get a witness in here today? But I see it. I don't know about you, but I see it. Can you see it? Do you see what I see? Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. In those days, when a king was, uh, was an important king, the bigger his train, the, uh, the, 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 the train that was behind him was bigger, depending on how his stature in the kingdom. Isaiah saw the Lord so big that his train behind him filled the temple. He saw him so big that his glory filled the temple. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men and women to myself. Everything will change in your life when you see the Lord for how big he really is. Everything will change when you see him as the God of the impossible. All of your dreams will increase when you realize there is nobody else above your dreams, nobody bigger than your dreams. I'm trying to tell somebody that he is high and lifted up. Uh, I came from the airport today, and there was a 747 parked uh, 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 there at the airport. And, and when I first came in, it didn't look very big. But as I got close to the airplane, it just got bigger and bigger. So all I'm trying to say is the, the closer you get to the Lord, the bigger he looks to you. If you're looking at him from a distance, he doesn't seem very big. But when you get close to him, he gets bigger and bigger. The Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith believes for something even though there's no proof that you can have it. 
But when you get close to the Lord, you begin to see things that you could never see before. The Word lets you see through rose-colored glasses. Come on, somebody. These aren't rose glasses, but, but the, the Word lets you see through rose-colored glasses. Paul said that I am the seed of Abraham, and what belongs to Abraham belongs to me. So I, as, I'm the seed of Abraham as, as a believer in Jesus Christ. So what God promised Abraham now belongs to me, right? Abraham was sitting in his tent, and God told him, he said, look out your tent as far to the north as you can see, as far to the south as you can see, as far to the east and far as the west that you can see. God told him that he would give him everything that he could see. See, as far as you can see, Abraham, God said, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, God gave that promise to Abraham, and that promise belongs to me. As far as I can see it, God said, Dennis, you can have it. If you can believe for restoration, you can have it. If you can believe for your children to be saved, you can have it. If you can believe me, God said, you can have it. Oh, this is a word for somebody. You've been limiting God. But if you begin to see it, God says, you can have it. But you got to get in the word, and you got to see him high and lift it up. If you can dream it, you can have it. If you can see it, you can have it. See, if you can see yourself 50 pounds lighter, you can have it. If you can see your children serving God, you can have it. If you can see yourself running your own company, you can have it. If you can see yourself healed, uh, you can have it. If you can see yourself as a homeowner, you can have it. Every person, every business, every ministry needs a vision statement. In other words, you need to write down your goals and dreams. When you get home, write down your goals, your dreams. You need to see your future and where you're going. I've already written down my goals for the first year here at Heritage Christian Center. And I got a, I've got a goal for my second year and a goal for my third year. But let me tell you, it's all about souls and it's all about people. Can I get an amen right there? Somebody say amen. Put a picture on your mirror of the car that you're believing God for. Uh, put a picture of the house you're believing God for. Uh, uh, put a picture on your refrigerator of what you want to look like by the end of this year. Oh, Lord, help me up in here. You need to get involved in your church. You need to find a place to serve in your church. You need to use your life for the kingdom of God. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you get a vision for your future, start talking about it. Oh, you might look foolish for a little while, but start talking about it. Your vision and your words have to line up. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I declare favor over you. I declare the favor of God will bring increase into your life. I declare that the favor of God will do things for you in 2015 that you cannot do for yourself. I declare that the favor of God will fight battles for you that you don't have to fight. Can I get a praise the Lord right there? You need to believe that God is with you even if doors have been closed. You need to have so much faith in him that you say, thank you, Lord, for closing that door. I don't know why the door closed, but I got to say thank you. You must have been protecting me in some way. Lord, I say thank you. The master potter uh, works on the clay, and he crushes the clay, and he begins to lift the clay. That's because my God is the master potter, and he is a lifting God. My God doesn't beat you down. My God will lift you up. I want you to see him for who he really is. Uh, he's lifting you even right now. He brought you here to church tonight to lift you even tonight. He's got a plan to lift you higher. Can you see it? If you can see it, then you can have it. I remember a song, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's going to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. I declare this is my year. This is my year that the clouds are gone. This is my year that the blessings come in. This is your year.
Peter saw the crippled man sitting at the city gate, and he said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give to you. Get up from there, boy. Arise and walk from where you are. He reached down, and he began to lift him up. He pulled him higher. That's what God's trying to do with you right now and your whole family. He's trying to pull you higher than where you are. God brought you to Heritage Christian Center to pull you higher than where you are and to lift you up. I declare that the favor of God is lifting you up even right now. Well, I thank God that he lifted me because I was a low-down, dirty, double-dog sinner, and he lifted me. I didn't deserve for him to lift me, but he lifted me. I didn't deserve for him to bless me, but he blessed me. I want you to see him for who he is. He's not mad at you. He loves you. He's got a plan for your life. Sinners, welcome here. You've got to have a vision for your future or you're going to die. Jesus was walking on the water. Peter said, Lord, if that's you, tell me to come to you. Uh, and Jesus said, come on, Peter. Peter saw the Lord, and he had a vision of doing the impossible. When you see the Lord, you'll get a vision of doing the impossible. I can't wait to see the people that come to the Lord for our Easter play coming up in just a couple of weeks. I just can't wait to see what's going to take place. Uh, I can see it. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I see your, your family members coming to the Lord. They think they're coming to a play, but they're coming to an altar call. They just don't know it. Lord, help me up in here. Peter got out of the boat. He began to walk on the water. But halfway across, uh, he, he began to look at the storm. The more you look at your problems, the, the less you're going to see Jesus. Get your eyes off of your problems. Get them back on Jesus. Quit talking about your problems. Start talking about Jesus. He is high and lifted up, and his train fills the temple. I declare the storm is passing over. I declare that the storm is passing over. Maybe you started out with a vision, and somewhere along the line, you lost your vision. Maybe your, your problems became so great that you got your eyes off of Jesus. I came here to tell you that if you can see it, you can get it back. But you got to have a vision for your future. I came back to Denver to speak vision to you. I came back to Denver to speak life to you. I came back to Denver to get you on the right track and to bring, bring order into your life. When Peter paid too much attention to his situation, the storm, he lost his ability to rise above it all. Without a vision, you're going to perish. People, Peter began to fail because he paid too much attention to the problems around him. Abraham didn't even consider the fact that he was 100 years old and God promised him a son. See, that's what faith is all about. It looks like there's no way you can get it. That's what your faith in the Lord is all about. He, he can do things that are impossible for you. If you're not on top of your situation today, it's because you're looking at the wrong thing. If you're sinking today, you're looking at the wrong thing. Get your vision back. Begin to speak to your vision. If you can see it, you can have it. Tell that to somebody. If you can see it, you can have it. Your spiritual enemy cannot stop the power of Jesus Christ. I said your spiritual enemy cannot stop the power of Jesus Christ. The only way he can defeat you is if you get your eyes off of the Lord. The only way he can defeat you is if he blinds you to the things of God. Paul said that the enemy blinds people so they can't see. I came here to tell somebody, you got to get your vision back. If you can see it, you can have it. God's about to do some great things in your life, even if you don't feel like it. I came here to, to deliver a package to somebody. If you can see it, you can have it. That's why the enemy throws so much stuff at us. He wants to take away our vision. He wants to blind us to the things of God. He wants to take away our dreams so we don't see how, how high and lifted up our Lord is. Get back into church. Get back into the Word. Thank you for being here for a happy hour on a Tuesday night because God's about to do something great in your life. David said, this I know, the Lord is with me because he has not allowed my enemies to triumph over me. Dennis said, I, this I know, that God must be with me because my enemies did not triumph over me. I'm trying to tell somebody, this I know, that God was with you, and this is how I know it, because the devil wasn't able to take you out. This I know, that God was with you. Tell somebody, God was with you. Let me tell you, look at all the people that swore you wouldn't make it. Look at all the people that tried to bring you down. Look at all of the folk that attacked you and, and brought things against you. In spite of it all, you are still here. And you're here because the Lord was with you. Somebody shout yes. There was a drought in the land, and God spoke to Elijah and told him that the drought was coming to an end. And Elijah said, I can hear the abundance of rain. 
God spoke to Elijah's heart, and he could see the rain coming. Because he could see it by faith, he could hear the rain before it ever came. Oh, I want you to see Jesus high and lifted up. He's got the name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending of everything. Oh, I want you to see God turning your life around tonight. I want you to get close to him and, and see him changing your situation. I want you to see God opening doors for you. Uh, if one door closes, begin to pull on another one. I want you to see God opening doors in your life. I want you to see God pulling the right strings in your life. I declare the favor of God over you. I speak into your future, and you look a lot better in your future than you look right now. Come on, somebody. I could hear the abundance of rain. Can you hear what I hear? I could hear the abundance of healing in your life. I could hear the abundance of finances in your house. I didn't say God was going to make you rich. I said he's going to take care of you and he's going to bless you. Get a vision and begin to speak to it. Prophesy over your dreams. You got a dream in your heart. Begin to, pr to prophesy over that dream. Tell your past, get out of the way. Tell your past that it's over. Don't judge my future by my past. We got those books in the bookshop. Go get a copy on your way out. Uh, start saying, I got a vision. Start saying, 2015 is my year. Start saying, God's writing new chapters in my book. If you can see it, then you can have it. I declare a shift over your household. I declare a shift in this season of your life. Something is changing. Somebody needs to get a, a grab a hold of this. Something is changing in your life. Something's being birthed in your spirit even right now. I'm talking to somebody that lost their dreams. Uh, it's a new day. Uh, God's doing a new thing. Uh, greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. If I can see it, I can have it. I see this building paid for. I see souls coming into the kingdom of God. I see God doing a new thing in the city of Denver. I can see the abundance of souls right now now. I can see the abundance of financial blessings right now. I see the abundance of healing. I see the abundance of joy. Mountains are moving. Mountain, get out of the way. Your dreams are coming to pass. Raise a hand and say, my dreams are coming to pass. I have not seen and ear hath not heard and neither has it entered the heart of man everything that God will do for those that love him. And since I love him, there's no telling what God will do. My God's going to do great things. My God is doing great things. My God will do great things. He did them in the past. He's going to do them today. He's going to do them in the future because he changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Everybody stand on your feet and say, if I can see it, I can have it. I can have it. I can have it.